There's a television show, it's on the History Channel, it's called Modern Marvels, a great show. It tells you all sorts of things that you didn't know about. I wonder if we had Modern Marvels for chemistry, what would we talk about? Well, many things, but it seems to me that one topic that is really a special topic in a lot of uh, chemistry classrooms is polymers. Yet polymers are truly modern marvels. They're certainly modern materials. They're very unique materials, very unique with very unique properties, but also they have unique structures. I'm going to demonstrate a, a unique property of one polymer, which is called polyethylene oxide, a very long name. The poly just means many, and mer in polymer means a unit. So we have many units. In polyethylene oxide, mercifully, uh, people have abbreviated it as uh, PEO, so that's a, a little easier to say than polyethylene oxide. The polyethylene oxide is composed of many units of ethylene oxide that have been reacted together to give a very, very large molecule. Polymers have unique properties, and because of their unique properties, they have many interesting applications that wouldn't be possible with what we think of as our normal, everyday solids and liquids. Because those polymer molecules get very large, you start getting physical effects due to the size of the molecules. Those molecules get tangled up easily, or they stretch, they become elastic. There are many natural polymers. Our bodies, proteins, DNA in our bodies, those are all natural polymers. There are also many synthetic polymers, such as polyethylene oxide. What I'm going to do is demonstrate the preparation of a polyethylene oxide solution or gel, and then some of its unique properties. And then I have kind of a model for why that reacts the way it does. I have pre-weighed some polyethylene oxide. I have about four grams of it. And I'm going to pour that into one of these very large beakers. Now, when I say that these molecules are large, what I mean is they're large. Uh, the molecular weight, the size of the molecule of polyethylene oxide, is about 4 million. Very large molecule. In terms of the many units that are joined together, that might be almost 100,000 units small molecules of ethylene oxide that have been added together to give a very long chain molecule. Now, because these molecules are so big, they really don't dissolve very well. What they do instead is they disperse. And so what I'm going to do is add some methyl alcohol here. And I'm going to use about 25 milliliters. Exact amount is not important but about 25 milliliters. And that alcohol is basically going to disperse the, um, the solid in it. So it's not going to dissolve, you can see. But what I want to do is essentially wet the surface of that, because I want to then add water to try to get a gel. But I can't do that unless the individual pieces of the solid have been thoroughly wetted with the methyl alcohol. You can also use ethyl alcohol for this one. Once I've done that, in one fell swoop, I want to add about 350 milliliters of water. And I want to add it all at once so that I don't get any precipitation or solid that kind of clumps out of there. And you can see I got a little bit of clumps, but as I stir that, it's going to begin to wet it all. Notice that it's a cloudy solution. It's not a true solution. And again, the reason it's not a true solution has to do with the size of those molecules. They can't get solvated, so they get dispersed instead. And I'm going to stir that. And what I'm actually going to do next is, I'm going to put this in here. And I'm going to pour it very rapidly back and forth between two beakers. Basically, that's actually going to mix it a little bit better than if I just do that. And I have a little bit of clumpiness in there. Also spilled a little. And again, so we're just going to pour back and forth between the two. This part, you want to do this quite a bit in order to truly form a good gel. What a gel is, is when you have these solid particles that essentially get swollen with water. In this case, they get, um, 
You have the polyethylene oxide, which forms a network, and the water molecules enter that, and essentially it physically swells due to the water. And I'm pouring that back and forth in between the two. You can see I did get some clumpiness there. I had prepared uh, a polymer gel earlier because it does take a long for this one to set up. And you know, uh, there's a saying that things improve with age. If wine improves with age. Some people improve with age. And so we'll hope that this polymer improved with age as well. You can see that that's almost a, there are no clumps in that solution. There are no globules of solid or anything. It is cloudy. And that's because, again, it's not dissolved. It's dispersed. And what I'm going to do is pour this between one and another. And I'm going to demonstrate a unique property of the polyethylene oxide. We call this the superoxide polymer gel. And the reason we, the super duper polymer gel, I'm going to do that quickly here. What I'm going to do is pour. And then notice as I put the beaker upright, notice that the polymer continues to pour. OK? Now, normally it wouldn't do that, of course. You can almost see that very thin string of polymer there. Let me do that back and forth. And I'm just going to do that several times back and forth. And as I pour and then put the, it almost vertical, you can see that it continues almost to self-siphon. It's actually called somehow, sometime the tubeless siphon. And the unique property is due to the size of those polymer molecules, that essentially they become crystalline and they uh, stretch out due to the force that I'm applying. Essentially, when I pour it, that's a shear force that I'm applying. And you can notice that it continues to pour, even though I have that second beaker up in the air, almost vertical. It continues to pour for a little bit. And it's best, it's most effective right at the very beginning. And see that it continues to pour a nice big stream there. And the reason for this has to do with the size of the polymer molecules, and it also has to do with their structure. Polyethylene oxide uh, has many oxygen atoms. Actually, within this long, it's a linear chain molecule, about 100,000 units long. So it's humongous, literally. Every third atom is an oxygen atom. Okay, carbon, carbon, oxygen, carbon, carbon, oxygen. All of those oxygen atoms can form hydrogen bonds to water. That's why it forms this viscous. It's a very thick liquid. That viscosity is due to the fact that it's swollen with the water molecules. It's called a viscoelastic gel because it almost has elastic properties because of the size of those polymer molecules, because of the hydrogen bonding with water. Now, I led this on by talking about modern marvels and modern materials. Some, well, we called it super duper polymer gel. Well, what's it good for? This particular one is used wherever you want to give a soft or slippery feeling to something. So it's used in conditioners and on a variety of other things. But polymers have many, many uses that you wouldn't be possible without the polymers. So whether it's the tiles on the space shuttle, whether it's uh, uh, batteries or solar arrays for satellites, whether it's artificial joints, bicycle helmets, contact lenses, all of these things are made possible because of the tremendous size of polymer molecules. I have a model here that I would like to use to demonstrate this unique characteristic. And on this one, I think it's probably best if I move to the front here. And basically, what I have is a long beaded chain, plastic beads, plastic because plastics are polymers. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start that flowing down. And what I want you to do is watch it as it starts. And pay in particular attention to basically the way this almost jumps out of the beaker. And again, this is one very long polymer chain. It's a model for a polymer. Think of each bead as one of those units that I talked about. OK, and if we're ready to go on that, are we focused well on that, do you think? All right, if we're focused, let's go. Watch the top of it. It's jumping. It jumps out of the beaker. 
because it's as if it carries it along. You get that force. It becomes essentially one long crystalline molecule, and it's as if it has a force that pulls it along with it. And that's a model for that self-siphoning behavior. Let's do that one more time here. And let's do that. OK, let's do it one more time and see if it looks almost like the other one that we saw, the polymer model, that it continues to pour out and siphon as it jumps out of the beaker against the force of gravity, gravity-defying, super-duper polymer gel.